So that's a good picture of Matt. And never let anybody say, I just can't make it. Call the people minds in your way. No more tears to the crowd. And we have finally tried our lives. Moving on up. Moving on up. Lord, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Kaleem Shabazz. I am the president of the Atlantic City branch of the NAACP, welcoming you to the October 13th edition of your NAACP Speaks. And we thank you for listening. Uh, as you know, by now, we are heard every Tuesday from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. on WEHA 88.7 and 100.3 FM. And we acknowledge our president and uh, radio icon, Elder William Hawks, and our superior engineering staff, led by Tyron and Super Steph. Uh, we thank them for their continuing cooperation. As we do every week, uh, we acknowledge and mourn the over 16,000 New Jersey residents who have been felled by COVID-19. Uh, we pray for their families, uh, we uplift their memories, uh, as we do with the more than 214,000 uh, people, citizens across this country who have also uh, died uh, from COVID-19. And we uh, pray for a quick resolution of this uh, scurrilous uh, uh, plague, really, uh, that is on our country. Hopefully we'll have a vaccine uh, sooner rather than later. We also pause for a moment uh, to remember and reflect on our fallen brother, uh, Earl Harvey, who was a, a very significant journalist and uh, entrepreneur and advocate for uh, minority uh, economic empowerment, who died suddenly. He was a recent guest on our show, a brother beloved, and his life accomplished. Uh, also, uh, today, uh, Yolanda, is October 13th, as we said before, uh, but this is the last day to register to vote in the November 3rd election. Now, obviously, you can register to vote anytime, and we never uh, want to stop encouraging people to register to vote and take part in uh, our, our system. But if you want to vote in the November election, the day is the last day. You can register online, uh, so you still have time if for some reason you have. haven't registered. Uh, and if you are a registered organization, we don't tell you who to vote for, but we encourage you to vote. And we have to underscore, uh, like we said last night at our very successful candidates night, uh, when we have a presence in the White House that encourages uh, terrorists, uh, that supports racism, uh, that uh, speaks against people of color in vicious ways, uh, our vote is our voice and we must use it. So please, if you haven't registered to vote, uh, October 13th, today is your deadline. And if you have, and if you haven't filled in your mail-in ballot, please fill in your mail-in ballot uh, and take it to either a secure mail drop box. And on the NACP site, we have all of the mailbox uh, drop boxes in Atlantic County. And uh, they are manned 24 hours a day. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience, I got my mail-in ballot, I believe October 2nd. I filled it out. I took it to the mail drop box in Atlantic City that is between the city hall and the county government building. And I checked it uh, because the county has a site that you can track your ballot. And my ballot was picked up the same day, October 6th. I think I dropped off around 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning. And so it picked up. So the tracing works, the county system works. And uh, as a uh, Mr. McGettigan, who's the county clerk, said on our show a couple weeks ago, they are working very closely with the Postal Service uh, to make sure that ballots are received in a timely fashion and handled. So please, uh, please get your mail-in ballots in. Thursday, October 22nd, let me say, Yolanda, before I turn it over to you, uh, Thursday, October 22nd, from 1 to 2 p.m., we're going to have a virtual panel, young men of color and interacting with law enforcement. This is the second part to 
something that we had earlier uh, in the summer, uh, speaking on the same issues with the prosecutor's office, uh, Chief White and the chief from uh, Galloway. Uh, this is sponsored jointly by the NAACP and the Coalition for a Safe Community led by our friend and brother Perry Mays, who was also a guest. So that's Thursday, October 22nd, 1 to 2 p.m. is virtual, and we will have that information to you to be up on the uh, NACP site very shortly. Uh, please tune in. Uh, we're going to have some young men in the community. Uh, we're going to have law enforcement from the federal level, the state level, and uh, Chief uh, Sarkos from the local level uh, to respond to these young men of color who are going to be talking about their experience with law enforcement, uh, their understanding of the interaction with law enforcement in young men of color, a, a state issue, a national issue, a local issue uh, that the NACP wants to bring some light on. Uh, and just for the record, uh, the NACP does not believe that we should defund the police. Uh, we believe that the police and their functions need to be reimagined, uh, refocused, and in some cases given even more funding. Uh, we believe that the uh, police need to be melded more with mental health um, uh, advocates and mental health professionals. So when they go on some of these calls, uh, for people who are uh, mentally impaired or who ha are having crisis, uh, that uh, it can be handled differently uh, and hopefully nonviolently. Uh, lastly, uh, on Monday, uh, October 19th, is our regular NACP meeting. Uh, we encourage our membership uh, to come. This is our general meeting. We're going to start promptly at 5 p.m. because this is going to be an outdoor meeting at Community Baptist Church. Uh, 234 North uh, New Jersey Avenue. Uh, we're going to start promptly at five so we can be finished uh, before it gets dark. Obviously, it gets dark earlier uh, now, and we will have a report from our nominating committee. So we encourage you, uh, our membership, uh, to just wanted you to uh, be aware that we are having that. Uh, Yolanda? Over to you, uh, our uh, brilliant and uh, efficient co-host, uh, president of the National Next Gen Program, our legal redress officer, and the co-chair uh, and behind the scenes uh, facilitator of our uh, candidates night last night. Let me say congratulations to you, Ayanna Polk, uh, Nastasia Davis, uh, who worked on the uh, social media aspect, Michael Johnson, our very efficient timekeeper, uh, India Steele Esquire, one of our moderators, and Reverend Stafford Miller, our other moderator. Everyone did an excellent job, even though uh, we were beset by some technical difficulties and the storm, uh, which both were beyond our control. Oh, but uh, it came through, and I just want to say it's not easy being a candidate, and we thank all of the candidates who attended. Uh, we have appreciate them and wish, we wish all of them uh, well as they seek the office uh, that they're running for. Yolanda, to you. Thank you, President. And again, congratulations to you. And congratulations again. For those who are following us on our social media, you will have known by now that our esteemed branch president in the Atlantic City branch was honored this weekend as the branch of the year by the New Jersey NAACP State Conference Convention. So again, congratulations. Thank and, you. Um, well, well deserved. Uh, so first I'll start off with the candidates tonight. So the first night, it's a part two, part two is coming up on Thursday. So it's a two part event. Our first night featured candidates from the Atlantic City Board of Education, the mayoral candidates, as well as our sheriff, Atlantic County Sheriff's candidates. And so far we are nearing 900 views on social media. This was a complete virtual platform. So we look forward to increasing that and making sure it's still on our social media. So even if you didn't have an opportunity to watch live, it's, there's still an opportunity to watch it on our social media page as well as our YouTube page. And really come out, be informed, understand who's running for your offices before you fill out your ballot. But we encourage you to fill it out as soon as possible and get it mailed. I also want to echo your comments, President, about Earl Harvey and just say what a loss he was, not just to us in the Black community, but just to the community at large, anywhere between Atlantic City and Philadelphia. This Earl Harvey was, um, he was a conduit of information, inspiration. He always had a smile on his face. 
And I, re and I can just tell you that even in my office at Cooper Levinson, the way that people understood information in Atlantic City was through the AC Times. There wasn't a, a partner's desk or an associate's desk where his paper was not sitting on it. And I just want to, to just echo your comments on how beloved he was, but just to the importance of having press that is, that is um, giving information on, on those subject matters that may not meet the press of Atlantic City. These are small business owners he's featured that were, um, when I became the national chair of the NAACP's Next Gen, he made sure he lifted me up and I, I appreciate him. And we will not know the importance of what he did until now that he's gone. And um, Absolutely. he gave us a few months ago an opportunity to really just peek into why he does what he does. And we'll re-air that NAACP Speaks episode for everyone to just listen to, but just the importance of black press and how it was a, a, a way to continue the oral history of black America in the early 1900s when they didn't know what was happening in the countries. I mean, in the country, whether families were in, in the South and the Pullman porters were bringing the, the newspapers with them up North. So they were able to read about their family back home in the Southern states. So again, we lift them up and we will miss him. Elinda, I remember real quick, uh, mm -hmm. my father used to buy a paper called the Pittsburgh Courier, which was an African-American newspaper uh, that we used to read every week. It was, uh, it, come, it came in the mail and it had information from all over the country about African-Americans. And it was one of the first uh, papers that carried the uh, column of Elijah Muhammad at that time. And uh, that was a long, long time ago, but that uh, just shows, as you said, the history of, of the of the black media and the importance of black media uh, and Earl Harvey will be missed. I just hope that there is somebody to, to not take his place, but continue his mission of, uh, of, of uh, elevating things. And he was always a proponent of the NACP, all of our activities and uh, programs and, and things uh, he put in his paper really at, at no charge. Uh, I can say that now and, and, and he is deeply, uh, deeply missed. He was actually putting together, as we speak, a black professionals network where he was combining almost a directory of, of professionals so they wouldn't be lost during this COVID-19 pandemic that people were still buying services or um, contracting with service providers for particular products. And he wanted to make it a place where people could go and just get the information in a one-stop shop. And, and I hope, as you said, president that someone will continue on that legacy and build that infrastructure. I think it started, it's, it's online, but it hasn't been, uh, been finalized yet. Right. So we'll get to the rest of our show mm -hmm. and we'll welcome our guest. Our guest, Matt Daugherty, is actually in our studio audience today, so we don't want to seem like we're forgetting him. We see him and we just want to acknowledge you and thank you for coming early. So we'll thank start you, with Matt. you at five o'clock. Thank you. So. Uh, again, I want to remind people that part two of our Atlantic City NAACP Candidates Forum will air on Thursday, October 15th at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And those invited candidates are the Atlanta County Surrogate, the Atlanta County Freeholder, District 3, and Atlanta County Freeholders at large positions, as well as the United States House of Representatives Second Congressional District candidates. So we want to make sure that everyone visits us live on Facebook. The doors will open at 5.30 p.m. and we will start promptly at 6 p.m. As always, if you'd like to be a member of the Atlantic City NAACP, there are two ways you can do that. One, you can send a check for $30 to our P.O. Box at Atlantic City NAACP, P.O. Box 1182, Absica, New Jersey, 08201. With that correspondence, we are asking you to either put a membership form or you can send correspondence with your name, address, email address, and phone number. And again, an adult membership is $30. Or you can visit us online at NAACP.org forward slash become a member. You type in 08401 for Atlantic City. Click search and we are branch number 2077B. And again, a one-year membership for adults is $30 and a youth membership is $10. But we do have youth memberships to give away as we build out what we are calling the 100 youth movement. So I have good news and I have bad news. Good news is there's still time to register to vote. 
bad news is that deadline is today. So if you do not register to vote by today, you will not be eligible to vote in our November 3rd election. So how do you register to vote? Well, the, qualifi the qualifications are that you must be a United States citizen. You must be at least 17 years old, but you should have reached the age of 18 by the time of voting. You have to be a resident of our county for 30 days before election, and you must be a person who is no longer incarcerated. So if you or you know someone who is currently on probation or parole, he or she is eligible to register to vote and should be registered. Again, the election registration deadline is 21 days before an election. So what does that mean? We are 21 days before the November 3rd election. The voter registration deadline is today, October 13th, and our general election remains November 3rd, 2020. I want to encourage everyone still to fill out the census. We have a little while longer to complete that. And how the census benefits our community is as follows. It provides federal funds, grants, and support to states, counties, and communities based on the information you provide to the census. And you, at that point, are eligible to receive our fair share of $675 billion of federal funds allocated across the country. But that only happens if, if we fill out our census. That money goes into vital programs such as um, helping with our schools, helping with our hospitals, our roads, public works. Businesses also use the census data to help us create jobs and understand um, who lives in our area and what services should be provided. Developers use it to build houses and revitalize old neighborhoods. Local governments use it for public safety and emergency preparedness, whether there should be a fire station in your community or not, for example. And we, as everyday citizens, use it to understand whether we should provide community initiatives and involving legislation, quality of life, or consumer advocacy to our communities. And again, as a reminder, the 2020 census does not ask you for your social security number, any monetary donations, what political party affiliation you have, if any, or your bank or credit card numbers. The 2020 census will not ask you about your citizenship st status, but those who are not citizens of the United States still should fill out the census. And if you provide any information to a census taker, please know that that information is 100% confidential because census takers are subject to a $250,000 fine and a penalty of imprisonment if they violate your confidentiality. I also, before we continue on, I do want to thank our supporting sponsors for last night's event as well as Thursday's event, and they are the ZTAO chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, the Atlantic City chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, the Atlantic City alumni chapter of Delta, Delta, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and Evanzar. So we want to thank them for their uh, support in our candidates forum. And with that, I believe I'll turn it over to you, President. Yolanda, thank you very much. Let me just uh, uh, add on and support your uh, acknowledgement of our sponsors. We appreciate them. Uh, we thank them. Uh, they put the candidate on their pages and we appreciate that. They're gonna do that again for Thursday. Uh, this is a very, very important election. I know every, uh, 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 I was talking to a associate of mine and we said the same thing. Uh, people say that this is the most important election of your lifetime, uh, but I think this is a uh, tipping point. Uh, we have a triple pandemic as we go to the polls. Uh, we have COVID-19, which over 200,000 of our fellow citizens, Americans have passed away, uh, and projections for many more. Unfortunately, uh, we have a prolonged economic crisis where many of our fellow citizens are out of work. Uh, suffering from food insecurity, uh, children uh, not able to go to school because of the virus, and we have the social crisis of hundreds of years of disparate treatment, racial violence, and segregation, oppression, and bigotry, uh, all at the same time. And unfortunately, uh, and I hate to report this, but it's true, uh, we have a president uh, that the NACP at our last uh, our convention last year, uh, we voted unanimously more than 8,000 delegates uh, to call for his impeachment based on his uh, violations of what we see toward the president do. And I think 
uh, no matter where you are on the political spectrum, uh, we have to come together as a nation. Uh, we cannot have the presidential pulpit used for racism and anti-Semitism and an encouragement of domestic terrorists. We can't have that as a nation. And uh, again, the NACP is a nonpartisan group. We don't tell people who to vote for, but we encourage people to vote. Uh, look at your candidates, look at their platforms, and then vote your conscience. And as uh, Yolanda said, Thursday uh, is going to be our candidates night. NACP does here. I was talking to a uh, a barbershop associate in the barbershop, as you know, in the African American community, it's a combination uh, uh, community center, uh, trading post. And uh, this person said, Well, why are you having another candidates night? Well, the first candidates night is for the primary election that we have before the primary. And then after the primary election, the general election comes, obviously, and we have another candidates night for the general election. That's something that we do every year, not just presidential year, because there's an election every year. Next year, it'll be the uh, governor will be uh, in uh, state senate and other seats. So we, uh, we do this as our civic duty. We encourage people uh, to listen. And again, Yolanda, before we get to our guests for the five o'clock hour, let me just uh, underline October 26th. Very important panel uh, dealing with young men of color and law enforcement. Uh, unfortunately, many of the incidents in this country uh, where uh, young have been uh, violated and killed, paralyzed. It was a young man of color, and our hope is that we will be able to have a panel uh, where these young men can express their concerns and their viewpoints, and they will be responded to by uh, police, uh, law enforcement officials in senior position. And, um, already have Chief Marcos, who's already confirmed. We're going to have somebody from the state uh, level. We're going to have somebody from the federal level uh, to respond uh, to the concerns of these young men of color. And that's what the NACP does. We build bridges, understanding, uh, and we believe in dialogue. Uh, we believe in agitation when necessary. Uh, we believe in legislation and And one of the things that we have to do is increase the level of cooperation between law enforcement and not only our young people, all people in the community, but especially young men of color. Uh, that's a flashpoint. Unfortunately, in 2020, we still, parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, have to talk to our young men about how to handle themselves when confronted by police to give them instructions so that they not don't have an unpleasant experience to lose their life. Uh, that is something that is, uh, across the board that people of color are telling young men, uh, no matter where they live, no matter what the economic status is, no matter if the uh, parent or the grandparent or the uncle is a professional or is a liberal or is unemployed. And that's hopefully something that uh, in the near future we won't have to do, but right now we have to do it. And the, one of the ways to get around that is uh, communication. In conversation. So October 22nd, uh, we encourage people uh, to tune in. That's going to be sponsored by the Coalition for Safe Community and Nancy Brain ACP. Um, and also, Yolanda wanted to say uh, that in addition to uh, the Lancy Branch being named uh, Branch of the Year, which I am very happy home by and accepted it, as I said to our state uh, leaders, uh, not just for myself, but for all the branch, the officers and the members, uh, and the fact that uh, we pulled our most impossible dream because we would started talking about the Atlantic City branch hosting the national NACP. Some people thought we would just talk, James Brown said, talking loud but saying enough, but we, we did it. And as uh, Muhammad Ali said, it's not bragging if you can do it. And we did, uh, with, along with the help of our kids, the five o'clock hour strong support uh, from uh, him as individual and from his entity, and uh, we have to acknowledge uh, that. Uh, but we did do it, and uh, I am so proud of, of this branch, uh, the leadership. But I want to say thank you for the uh, next gen. You had a couch party. 
I never heard of a couch party before, but you had that at the end of the uh, conference, and it was really good. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. And uh, I was telling my brother, I said, uh, I sat there on the couch, a little bit of dancing. I went and got me a glass of apple juice, and, and then I went to bed. But it, <laughs> it was a good party. Uh, the next gen is super. Uh, I know people get tired of hearing me staying in the state conference. I believe Lang City Branch is the best next gen component of any branch in the state and the region. Uh, again, I'm biased. And I just wanted to say that I, I enjoy the country. <laughs> I'm also biased. <laughs> but you think that makes sense, right? We have a, a good branch. We have some excellent uh, people. Of course. And that, that goes to you and President Richard Smith of the New Jersey State Conference for really honing the uh, relationship between our young people and the rest of our members of the, of the NAACP because that's not, doesn't happen everywhere. So we want right. to thank you and uh, tell you how much we appreciate and how we brag about you to other oh, next okay. generations. And, okay. Um, you make them jealous. Okay. And now I know what a couch party is, so uh, that's part go. of my vocabulary. That's, that, that's good. I think your vernacular has been increasing over the last year. Hanging out with young people, you know, it was we were talking about dope not too long ago. Right. Now we're talking about couch parties, and listen, we'll continue with the momentum. Listen, I I I I think I better put this in my phone so I can look up my uh, terms as I go forward. I don't want to misuse the uh, the terms, but I, I'm getting right. education uh, to our five o'clock hour. And uh, we are delighted to have as our guest, uh, Matt Dowry, who is the executive director of the CRDA uh, in Atlantic City. Uh, he has been in Atlantic City, it seems like forever, but he's only been here a short time. Uh, we're going to pass a resolution to city council, make him an honorary Atlantic City resident. Uh, he has ingrained and uh, embedded himself in the community. Uh, he's a man of tremendous sensitivity and compassion. Uh, he's a former elected official, so he understands the urban landscape. He understands government. Uh, he understands the private sector. He's melded the two. And uh, when the history of the 2022 National CP Convention is written, it will have to be written that one of the stars uh, was Matt Darby. He believed in it early on. Uh, he put Meet AC, which is under him, uh, behind it. Uh, Sandy Harvey, our dear friend and, and sister, a consummate professional, uh, helped out. And I still want to know before I introduce Matt Darby, I don't know how Sandy Harvey got the spinners to announce the Atlantic City NACP in a show. At, I'll never understand that. The spinner show was at the Golden Nugget put on an excellent show. And in the middle of the show, the one that the lead singer said, we have the uh, uh, executive committee, the national committee from the NACP, members of the Lang NACP in the audience. I never understood how she did it, but she did. And that is to her everlasting credit along with Matt. So Yolanda, to you to introduce uh, our uh, guests for the five o'clock hour, o'clock hour, Matt Darby. Thank you, President. So first, Mr. Doherty, we'll, we'll read your bio and then we'll get into the first question. Matt Doherty was selected by Governor Phil Murphy to lead the Casino Reinvestment Development Authority as Executive Director, effective June 1st, 2018. In his role as Executive Director, Mr. Doherty is responsible for creating private, public-private partnerships and intergovernmental agreements to encourage local growth within the tourism district. He will be utilizing opportunities to supplement the CRDA's financing of special events, leveraging state assets, and attracting private capital to stimulate investment in brick and mortar projects. Mr. Doherty was named as one of the Power 50, South Jersey's most influential leaders by South Jersey Biz Magazine. Mr. Doherty is the chairman of the board of Meet AC and sits on the Jersey Shore Partnership, Atlantic City Chamber of Commerce, and Light. Lloyd D. Levinson Institute of Gaming, Hosp Hospitality, and Tourism Boards. He is also a member of the Atlantic City NAACP. And he will receive the NAACP Governmental Award at their annual meeting in 2020. Oh, we didn't get to honor you this year, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a little while too, right, right President? In recognition oh, yeah, of his distinguished service. 
You were gonna say? I was gonna say, uh, we're gonna have to maybe give that to Matt uh, and all the other 2020 uh, winners that we didn't have a chance at some point. But listen, as long as we have it, he's our winner. And we appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Darty was a recipient of our NAACP governmental award this year at our Freedom Fund, but due, due to COVID-19, he was unable to be bestowed with that award, but we are still honoring him with that distinguished award. And he has given that award for his service, leadership, and dedication to the Atlantic City community and was chosen as the Stockton University School of Business Inter Internship Partner of the Year in 2019. Mr. Darty is the former mayor of Belmar, New Jersey. During his tenure as mayor, Belmar is the, was the only town in the state of New Jersey to have no tax increase for seven straight years, all while recovering and rebuilding from Superstorm Sandy. Also, Belmar generated more private economic investment during his seven years as mayor than in the previous 30 years. Prior to serving as mayor of Belmar, Mr. Darty was the, a financial advisor for firms such as MetLife, Mass Mutual and Investors Bank. He earned his bachelor's degree and master's degree from Georgetown University, where he was a scholarship athlete in track and field. He is married and has three beautiful children. Welcome, Mr. Doherty. Thank you very much. It's, it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you and Councilman Shabazz, so thank you very much. So the first question is, tell us three things about you. Uh, well, uh, your bio kind of uh, summed it all up. Um, but uh, I'll tell you, you know, um, having the experience of being a mayor of my town in Belmar um, really did give me an opportunity to, to or, or gave me the, the background to work with folks like, uh, you know, Mayor Small and Councilman Shabazz and other members of the council. And one of the things that was important to me from CRDA's perspective is to really restore respect with the council and the governing body and that this is their town. Uh, I am here as uh, the executive director appointed by the governor for the Casino Reinvestment Development Authority, but my first focus is to work with the governing body, all chosen by the folks that live in Atlantic City, and ensure that what I'm doing as executive director um, you know, complies with and is in agreement with what the governing body wants for their town. Um, and, you know, that was one of the important things I wanted to do when I became executive director. And, you know, uh, Councilman Shabazz has been so grateful and, 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 and warm and welcoming and, and making me feel a part of, of Atlantic City um, that, you know, I, I feel like I'm an honorary uh, citizen of Atlantic City. <laughs> and, you know, I think having that type of relationship with the council allows us to really make significant improvements using CRDA resources that have a direct tangible benefit on the residents of Atlantic City. Um, if I could name a couple of them, you know, expanding Atlantic care. I mean, the infant mortality rates for African Americans in Atlantic City is unconscionable. And, you know, someone has to do something about it. And this money shouldn't be going to North Jersey or Central Jersey or you know, to supply uh, anywhere else, it should be spent on the residents of Atlantic City. So we have um, a commitment of $15 million in cash and $3 million in land for that type of an expansion. Um, at the same time, hopefully tomorrow, uh, Council Shabazz will be there, but you know, tomorrow is a groundbreaking for phase two of Stockton University's campus in Atlantic City. Um, right. Because we need to move away from this gaming. You know, gaming, is not gonna save Atlantic City. We, we all know that. Um, it had its chance. Yeah, it hasn't worked. But building on hospitals like Atlantic Care, bringing more young people into Atlantic City and keeping young people in Atlantic City. You know, the brain drain is also a, a part of the problem. And when you have something like Stock University that we can partner with, um, provide them, you know, uh, the capital to, to help build a, a new dormitory in a very affordable and a very well-renowned university right in Atlantic City. So it's, it's projects like that where we work in, in, in a collaborative way. And I'll give you one more example that, that doesn't take money. And that is the open container law. So the mayor and council passed a 
or, or uh, the uh, legislature passed legislation and the governor signed it to put into effect an open container law in the tourism district of Atlantic City. Well, Atlantic City already had it for COVID this past year. So what I've done is I've talked with the mayor and council members and said, look, what do you want us to do? This is, again, this is your city. Tell us what you want us to do. And they said, look, why don't you just keep the same footprint that we have now? So when we move forward at CRDA, if we make any alterations to that, the first thing I'm going to do is say, you know, Councilman Shabazz, how does this affect you and the folks in your ward that you represent that are important to you? Uh, you know, uh, Mayor Small, you know, you, who's done a remarkable job leading Atlantic City through a, a, a worldwide pandemic along with significant social unrest. And he's done a remarkable job. But, you know, talk to Mayor Small, make sure he's okay with it. And by the way, if they're not okay with it, we're not steamrolling anything. Uh, you know, as Governor Murphy said, we're not going to Bigfoot on Atlantic City, its government or its residents. So it's, it's those type of policies that uh, I think are important. So I, I know your question was to tell you three things about me, um, <laughs> but I, I, I get excited when I can talk about Atlantic City. I get excited about when I get to talk about some of the things that we can do in Atlantic City, the potential. Um, and and uh, so I, I, I got off on a little bit of a tangent. Uh, I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but thank you for the question. So that gets into the next question. And the next question is, what does the CRDA do? But I will tell you, Mr. Doherty, that a few, well, actually this time last year when the national board came, we had an opportunity to bring some of our, of our young people with them to Atlantic City. And I will tell you how amazed they were at the boardwalk. They didn't know Atlantic City looked like this. And since the pandemic has hit, a few of them have used Atlantic City as a getaway from their own towns around the country. So we have next geners in over 35 states. And so I know of at least five of them who have used Atlantic City since last year as a place they said they will come back to because they had such a great time on the Atlantic City Boardwalk. And that's special thanks to you and, and CRDA. So that goes well, to our I'll, second I'll question. That, uh, uh, as any good politician should do, as the chairman of uh, Mide C, as you mentioned, uh, I take full credit for someone else's work and ability. That's right. And I will tell you that, uh, as Councilman Shabazz mentioned, Sandy Harvey did a remarkable job um securing that convention which is huge for atlantic city I mean, this is this isn't a regional this is this is a national convention we it's hard to land these and she did it which just goes to prove the point you know if you want to get something done put a black woman in charge thank you for that you, you're <laughs> for right Mr. Gardy's words my wife just heard you said you're right <laughs> but let, let me say this uh, uh matt real, real quick one of the things that uh, you have been pushing, we have been pushing, Sandy Harvey's been pushing, is people who are influencers, people to Lang City story. And like Yolanda said, the young people, the next gen uh, leadership came back. They are influencers in the community. They have professionals, they're leaders uh, locally, and they're leaders nationally in a national organization. And they came back because they had a good time in Lang City. And I know that they're telling people in their individual communities that Atlantic City is coming up for 2022 for the National Convention. You need to make sure you come to the convention. And as Rhonda said, when you want to have a getaway, come to Atlantic City. It is a great place to come to. And although we have some problems, like I said in our Detroit uh, presentation last year at the convention, I said it's possible to have a bad time in Atlantic City if you want to, because Atlantic City has so many uh, unique uh, and present uh, consumer things. And after uh, this uh, crisis is over in 2022, I know people are going to want to bust up their house and we want them to come to Atlantic City. Let me ask this real quick, Matt. Uh, we were talking about the projects and I can tell you just listen to you talk about those important projects. Well, there's two that I wanted to ask you about. One is the supermarket. If you can tell us what's happening with that. And the other is the street lights projects, both of which uh, CRDA is deeply involved in. Uh, great question. Uh, as, uh, as you know, the uh, CRDA board passed a resolution back over last year, uh, August of 2019, naming ShopRite as a developer for a parcel of land on Baltic between Ohio and Indiana. It's going to be a great project. We are working through some environmental issues. Um, you know, unfortunately, one of the legacies that you've inherited, Councilman, is cleaning up for 
mistakes that people have made in Atlantic City decades right. ago. Uh, and, you know, some of those mistakes was simply burying things underground and pretending them they're, they're, they're not there. Um, so we're working through the environmental cleanup. Um, same thing with the, that's holding up the, uh, the hospital is environmental cleanup. Um, you know, so there's, there's, it's one thing looking at the land. Once you start digging down, you never know what you're going to find, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but, you know, the, 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 the issue of food insecurity and, and everyone knowing that a place like Atlantic City is a food desert, you know, it gets highlighted during something like a COVID-19 crisis. Right. Um, CRDA has now deployed over a million five in feeding um, initiatives in Atlantic City. Um, and that's only the last few months, right? Only since April when we started this. And I got to tell you, the lines, we, we, you know, if it, was, if it was $15 million, we would still have demand for it. Right. Um, so so it's, it's, it really is visible how important it is to have that grocery store, you know, in town. We're dedicated to making it happen. ShopRite is dedicated to making it happen. It's taking way longer than it should. It's extremely frustrating for me and the board. Um, but we will get there, and, and we, appreciate, we appreciate your support in making that a reality. Um, the second one on the lights, you know, we were working with um, the City of Atlantic City, um, uh, a, uh, Atlantic City Electric, uh, to ensure that, you know, and it's such a simple thing, you know, in other communities, they don't tolerate lights being out, and, and we shouldn't tolerate it in Atlantic City either. The residents deserve better, and you know, that's a place where we need to dedicate CRDA resources to ensure that it is better. And, and by the way, being better just means being as good as other communities. Why shouldn't Atlantic City be as good as any other community? We shouldn't settle for anything except the best. Um, so we, we are going to move forward on, on the streetlights. Um, and, and one of the other things you, you touched on before, which I think is worth noting, um, was, uh, you know, the, the young people. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been important to me as a member of, C, uh, as executive director of CRDA, working with uh, the leaders in, in Atlantic City to develop, you know, or to support programs being developed for youths. Uh, you know, we work with Pastor Days on his leadership initiative, uh, along with our friends at Hard Rock, um, because there are, you know, these at-risk youth, uh, and something has to be done. And, and what's you know, what's got to be frustrating for, for you, Councilman, is you, you know what the problems are. And, mm -hmm. and we can figure out what the solutions are. It's just having the will and the, the intent to actually, you know, commit ourselves to make sure that it gets done. And, you know, I look at myself as simply a, a tool um, in Atlantic City to try to get, you know, whether it's, it's a big development project like Atlantic Care or something smaller financially, but you know, meaningful impact of supporting programs, at, you know, Pastor Dave's or at the Boys and Girls Club, um, you know, other, you know, folks that come to us, uh, Volunteers of America. Um, we're about to work with Volunteers of America on a program for human trafficking. Mm. So one of the challenges mm. you have when you have gaming and you, and you have this type of industry, you will often attract some other folks who are, uh, mm have nefarious uh, desires. And, um, you know, it, it's a problem in Atlantic City. When we look at the state of New Jersey, the only uh, area that has more human trafficking in Atlantic City is Bergen County. Bergen County is over a million people. Atlantic City is only 39,000, 40,000 people. And it's not the people from Atlantic City. It's the people from outside of Atlantic City who are coming inside and causing problems and causing bad perception outside, as you mentioned uh, you know, before, how important it is to get a positive uh, story and a positive outlook on Atlantic City. So we're using money, um, you know, our financial resources to help address those problems as well, those, those social problems that come with you know, having this large gaming presence and industry in the city also. Let, let me do full disclosure, man, I will be at the uh... Stockton program tomorrow. I, I'm uh, also on the adjunct Falcon, so I, I plan to, uh, to be there. Very excited about the groundbreaking. Then also say in my other hat, as the uh, council representative of Third Ward, which I am uh, very happy to be uh, that person that elected representative Third Ward. The market is going to be in the Third Ward, so it's the landing care. 
so I just want uh, to disclose that I am a fervent, enthusiastic, adamant supporter of both of those projects and the uh, lighting. Uh, I agree with you, and I'm so glad to hear you uh, say that Atlantic City should have what every other community has, and we should not settle for second best. I just had a public safety uh, virtual town hall uh, last month. I have, I'm gonna have another one in November. And that was one of the people talked about, they talked about lights and, and public safety. Uh, they talked about the supermarket. I'm so glad you said that my uh, fall, my spring newsletter, I had a statement from the Lieutenant Governor when she said uh, everyone is committed to the supermarket, but sometimes people have heard so many things uh, that was promised in Lansing, it didn't happen, so I'm glad that you underscored that the supermarket is coming, it has taken too long, we will get there, and also Atlantic Care, uh, as you know, we have a NACP task force on infant and maternal mortality, we're focused on that, we're working with the governors of life who's checking that, and, and, and I look forward to the day when Atlantic Care breaks ground, because we have to work on infant and maternal mortality, it is despicable that Atlantic City leads in category uh, and, and we want to get to the day when it's zero. Uh, I think Yolanda has the next question. Thank you, President. So another thing that Atlantic City is known for is its entertainment. Do you foresee any summer entertainment events coming to Atlantic City in 2021? Uh, I sure hope so. I mean, we had it budgeted um, you know, 2019 was, was outstanding. We had great entertainment every night up on the boardwalk, um, whether it was uh, uh, Broadway on the boardwalk or Chicken Bone Beach Jazz, every night was taken up. And then we did special concerts at Gardner's Basin, bringing them back. They were well attended, didn't matter what the weather was. And they were all, um, you know, no issues with any of them large crowds and and everyone got along it was it was really a remarkable thing to see to miss that this year was unfortunate you know um especially the ones at gardner's basin because that you know it's one thing to bring tourists in and that's important mm -hmm. but it's another thing to build community spirit right. and, and and it's it's the little things like that that really help build that community spirit so we did miss it this year um we want to bring it back next year we <laughs> We'll see. Uh, I mean, hopefully uh, COVID-19 is under control and whatever flare-ups that come during the winter can be contained by, you know, the, the spring and we can have an enjoyable summer. I mean, I will tell you right now, we have one show booked. Um, Michael Buble is booked at Boardwalk Hall for the mm -hmm. middle of March. That's 13,500 people indoors. I don't know if that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm... You know, I, I, I'm usually an optimist, but uh, I have to be a realist sometimes as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I will tell you that we, we, we have the financial, um, we have the, the, the money set aside for that type of entertainment for the summer of 2021, because we miss it this year. Matt, I have to admit, I'm a jazz a fan. Uh, the Chicken Bone Jazz uh, series was outstanding. We've had, uh, premier town in the Lang City and, and the Broadway and also the uh, uh, the Conscious Beach. Uh, too many people uh, for me to attend, but I, I went there just to support it. Tremendous, tremendous uh, programs. And, and you're right. All those programs, the one thing they had in common, no matter what genre of music it was, is that there were no incidents. And and, and I think that's, that's to be applauded, uh, all, all the programs. Um, and I think you agree with me, Councilman. A lot, you know, a lot of it goes to the leadership of the Atlantic City Police Department. Absolutely. So, unfortunately, um, you know, we're losing Chief White. Uh, he's got a well-earned retirement that he's going to be moving into. Um, but he he did a remarkable job. Absolutely. And, you know, really challenging circumstances, and um, you know, those are going to be very, very big shoes to fill. Well, 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 you're right, man. Chief, and, and I'm happy to say that he's a member of our executive committee. Uh, he's criminal justice a reform committee on uh, his second chapter of, of his life as a, a private citizen. Uh, but it was it was a tremendous effort uh, with, with law enforcement, with city government, with CODA, 
and with those uh, private uh, entertainers. It was almost a seamless program. I mean, sometimes I would just walk on the boardwalk at night to, for those programs, and it was hundreds of people every night, like you said, and uh, no problems, people enjoying themselves. And I, I think it was just so good for the image of Lang City and the Gardeners' pieces. That was like a walk down memory because those uh, programs were community programs and the music was uh, music my era. Uh, and uh, also, I, I think the era of our in studio audience, they know who they are, uh, the Motowns and, and, and all that, and the Philly sound. And, and that, that was just great. And that brings the community together. And, and it just speaks to the uh, fact, as we said before, sensitivity uh, to uh, support programs like that. And uh, I, I, I can't thank you enough. And we're going to have to think of uh, Yolanda a way to get our 2020 board winners uh, their awards before 2021 comes in. And, and, and I'm like, I'm mad, I'm an optimist. Uh, unfortunately, I don't even see how we're going to be able to have our annual breakfast, which was be April of 2021. Uh, I don't know. I, I hope that this virus will be tamed, but uh, I don't know. Uh, but uh, before we uh, close out, Matt, do you want to say something about the uh, 2022 convention? Uh, as I said, you, uh, CRD plays such a prominent role. What are you looking for uh, the 2022 NAP National Convention to bring? Before you answer, let me also I'm able to announce that the 2022 state NACP convention is also going to be in Lansing City. So. Oh, that's great, too. That's great, too, Councilman. Um, no, it, it's, it really is a, a, a unique opportunity to showcase um, how amazing Atlantic City is uh, on a national level. Um, you're going to have, you know, uh, people, celebrities, you're going to have athletes, you're going to have politicians, um, depending on this November 3rd, you're probably going to have the president of the United States of America coming yep. to Atlantic City, coming to, president. To, 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 to make a speech. Uh, right. And that's, um, you know, that, that's, it's important for us to really take a full grasp of that and right. take advantage of that. So one, right. one of the ways we're playing a role, aside from hosting it, is we're funding the transportation. So because the uh, nearest airport, large airport, is Philadelphia, mm -hmm. um, we're going to fund about a million five in the transportation costs to get folks from Philadelphia to Atlantic City and then back to Philadelphia to fly back all over the country. Um, but it, it's it's a very worthwhile investment, uh, and um, you know I I think it's an opportunity again to showcase showcase what's amazing about Atlantic City. Well, uh, Matt, as you know, putting together a host committee, of course, you're going to comment on that. We're going to start working uh, to uh, build up and make sure that Atlantic City hosts, we hope, just a convention ever. Detroit, about uh, 8,000 people. I happen to believe that we can more than that. And, and with all due respect to Detroit, it's a great town, good people in there. But I don't think Detroit can hold a candle to Atlantic City when it comes to hosting a convention, giving people something to do. Uh, the entertainment that we'll have, the boardwalk, the beach, the golf, people play golf, all of the golf courses that we have around here, the shopping. Uh, we love to shop in America. We have shopping facilities. So uh, I, I'm just up to that. And, and, and I think, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, Matt, when the history of this convention is written, uh, the, the, the uh, early part that you pay, being an early believer and supporter, uh, really helped. And I, I don't uh, hyperbole to say that without the strong support of CRDA, uh, that we wouldn't have been able to convince our uh, national committee to come to Atlantic City. Uh, uh, you uh, even made a, a video, an eight minute video, and we took that out and we presented that to our committee. I could tell by the response. This was people from all over the country. When they saw the video and when they heard the, the kinds of partnerships we had uh, it was just blown away. And to top it off, when the National Committee came to Atlantic City, to actually see Atlantic City, uh, that was it. And uh, you, you're responsible uh, for allowing us to do that. And we are eternally grateful. And I think we'll be receive, receiving the benefits long after 2022. And even before that, because people are going to be coming as 
when we get over this virus uh, to, to check a lane city out before, uh, and it's going to be, uh, I think, win win, win situation for for the merchants, for the business people, and, and for our young people. So many professionals, so many uh, activists, so many people from around the country. Uh, one thing we'll be talking about this, Matt, we want to make sure that several hundred of our young people are involved uh, as ushers, as program support, and, and just as participants, as you said, we'll probably have a president or vice president coming to see us. Uh, at the convention, obviously, we're going to have plenty of U.S. senators uh, and uh, representatives. So we want to make sure our young people uh, have a chance to uh, to participate in this. Uh, we have about six minutes left, Matt. Would you like to have uh, some closing remarks, and then we'll have remarks by uh, our co-host in Melville. Then we'll be finished. To you, Matt. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, again, thank you very much for having me on. Um, you know, at some point, I want to get invited to one of these couch parties. <laughs> not, I mean, Kaleem Shabazz gets to go, but not Matt Doherty. I mean, come on, Yolanda. You're on a cat couch. It's half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I, I love my job. And I, I love the opportunity that I get to wake up. I get to work with Councilman Shabazz. I get to work with Councilman Randolph. I get to work with all the other members of the governing body, uh, and in particular, uh, Mayor Small. Um, you know, I joke with Mayor Small how loyal he is because – he still has faith in those Philadelphia Eagles. So, oh. But uh, all joking aside, he's, he's right. great to work with. And, and that's right. so important um, to have a, a good line of communication between the two of us. Um, you know, he, he helps me out tremendously. And, you know, do, you know when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm able to meet with, you know, Councilman Kurtz and you and, and other members of the, the governing body, you know, I want to hear from you. What are you hearing from folks in the street? What what can we be doing? And that's, that's how we came up with the NCO program, right? The right. community officer program. And that operates right now from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Well, we want to extend that. We want that to operate from 4 p.m. to midnight. And, right. and working with, you know, Lieutenant Santiago and working with other folks in the Atlantic City Police Department to, to come up with these type of community policing needs. As you mentioned before, you're not looking, no one wants to defund the police. Mm -hmm. You just want to use it as a tool for the community, not a tool on the community. Right. And that's what you have in Atlantic City. So let's, let's grow on that. Let's build on that. And working with the you know, police department, we've been able to identify some rooming houses in the tourism district that are, are terrible. And, and they're not, again, going back to the, the problem we had about human trafficking I mentioned before, this is not Atlantic City residents. Right. These are people coming here from outside and, and they're not contributing in a positive way to the community. Um, other communities wouldn't stand for this and neither should Atlantic City. So whatever we can do to improve those type of quality of life measures, um, you know, we want to invest in and put our, put our, our, our money behind um, policing, uh, social services, community outreach. Um, we we want to be a part of it. And, and I think that's really where CRD needs to be now and in the future is looking at how, how do we integrate into Atlantic City and how do we use our tools to ensure that whatever dollars we spend have a positive impact on the residents who live here today, tomorrow, and for generations to come? Thank you so much, Matt. We appreciate you uh, taking your time to come out. Yolanda, 30 seconds. Thank you again, Mr. Doherty. We really appreciate you, and you'll get the first invite to our next couch party. President, <laughs> you'll get the second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say this. Um, coming up, as you know, Thursday is our part two of our candidates night, but we also want to uh, tip our hats to one of our sponsors, and that's the Atlantic City chapter of the Links Incorporated. They are also having a virtual get out the vote forum tomorrow, October 14th at 6.30 p.m. on their Facebook page. And the speakers are going to be Senator Gill, Dr. Joyce Harley, and Akia Cullum from the Connecticut State Conference of the NAACP. So we look forward to partnering with them and maybe hosting a watch party of their party on our Atlantic City and NAACP page. Vote, 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 Sounds like a powerful panel. Again, uh, Matt Darby, CR Executive Director, thank you so much. Uh, Yolanda, thank you for uh, all that you do. Uh, we didn't tally up. Normally, we have a competition about who's guest uh, we are. I think uh, that will be a, a joint guest because I can't win that tally anyway. I think that I'm being taken advantage of that story. Uh, we hope everyone is uh, safe. 
uh, wash hands, wear your mask, social distance, and uh, we will see you next week. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. We fight, we win. Thank you. Have a good week. Yeah,